Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omanus and today I will react to the top 10 best named songs. I think I've decided for this for a long time or you know I was kind of out of it for a bit but I think I want to continue what I'm doing because if I don't talk to anyone you know I don't really have friends around me to talk and I still have you know some guys on the internet that, wants, that want to talk to me. So I think I want to continue this path of you know doing the watch mojo fits and the reviews I think. I do want to, you know, keep up the Watch Mojo vids and I think I want to kind of improve on the review since most of you people don't really watch it and I don't really watch it back. So I think I'm gonna make those videos a bit more interesting to get people watching those, I suppose, and I'm gonna turn up the lighting for a bit. Uh, but yeah, top 10 best named songs. Uh, I thought I already did this, but apparently I didn't, so I'm gonna do this. That should be way better. Um, yeah, Megadeth is the thumbnail, got a lot of it of course, so Peace Cells is going to be on the list. Champagne Supernova by Oasis, one of my favorite songs ever. Uh, Riders on the Storm, I mean it's such a great title, such a great song, that the post Jim Morrison band was called Riders on the Storm, because it was the final song with. I'm pretty sure it was the last song with Jim Morrison, now that I, now that I think about it. And you know, it is, it's just a great fucking title and a great song to go, to go out on, so that's just perfect right there. I can't really recall other lists of, or other songs of the list. I've watched this already, I thought I already reacted to it since it's a pretty, you know, neat video, but apparently I haven't, so let's go. Those are some requests, uh, the slideshow is Pearl Jam with how is this song called? Uh, yeah, you know, I love Pearl, Pearl Jam, but how is this song called again? Like, I listened a shitload to 10 the other day, but, I, but, but it's really hard for me to listen to the other stuff, because 10 is such an amazing record, and their other stuff is still really good. Phytology is kind of a personal favorite of mine, versus kind of a lesser 10, but it's still really good. You know, their other 90s stuff, No Code, is a really, like, um, relaxed listen, and Yield is pretty underrated, I think, so. Some pretty good albums, and I think, you know, Backspacer, you know, the one with the multiple album covers, that, that's pretty, or the multiple pictures. They're, it's kind of like a no code again, but a bit heavier. I, I really like that. And Lightning Bullet, I think, is pretty good. So, I am a big Pearl Jam fan. I only forgot, uh, I, I believe it's called, like, country woman sitting in a small desk or something in a country town. A, a long ass title. I, I love that song, I love version. So, let's get into it. Uh, Eddie, oh, shut the fuck up. Eddie has a great look in that. What the fuck is that guy doing? Just die already. He's like six years old. Oh yeah, and I wanted to address something uh, before I get into the video. Uh, I unbent one of my like former fans. He is still subscribed, I believe, and uh, he just left a comment last week. Uh, I, I'm kind of beefing with that guy recently, but if you're watching this, you know. Try to get over it. I banned you. I wasn't happy with what you're saying. I was like, oh, I'm not very, you know, happy with the way things are going on this channel because I have fans, but I want more because, you know, I have like a thousand videos almost and like I, I don't even have 200, 200 subscribers. So I was kind of underwhelmed with the ratings. And uh, that guy was like, oh, you know, be happy with the fans that you have. And I, I'm kind of like, you know, I don't give a fuck anymore. I'm like, you know, I'm happy for the fans that I have right now. And never get more fans, I'm happy with that. But I'm just, you know, I like to do this. I like to just talk in general, so. And I mean, if fans, if people, if more people are joining, I would be, uh, that would be appreciated. But if not, you know, it's still fun. I kind of have that mentality mentality right now. So if you're still bitching and moaning about that, then you know, go fuck yourself. To that guy out there, you, you know who you are. You're watching this. Come on. Now. And if if you don't know who I'm talking about, you know other people, then uh, don't mind what I just said. Enjoy the video. I mean. Uh, I'm iffy on the song because it's like play to death, but nah. rock lobster. Kind of a dated song, honestly. I don't really mind the title, honestly. It's alright. Uh, 
Beloved Butterfly, Wait, that's a great title right there. I forgot the Smashing Pumpkin, but surely include them. I, I'm pretty sure they are on the list, so there you go. Song quality is not the main criteria for our choices. It is a consideration that's mixed in with the story behind the title and how much it stands out. Rock and roll ain't noise pollution. As you guys may know, I'm not a huge fan of ACDC, but Black and Black and Black. Back in Black is a great album, I love that album. Unfortunately they don't have a lot of albums like that or they try to replicate that success but it just wasn't the same. But uh, yeah, Back in Black, amazing album. Unfortunately they don't really have another album like that in their discography. The closest thing they have to that is I would say Let There Be Rock or Highway to Hell. Those are pretty good albums but outside of that not a huge ACDC fan but this is, this is a stellar record. If only they had more records like, like that. The hell if they were trying with that, but <laughs> never succeeded. Rock and roll ain't noise pollution. AC DC. And I mean, um, I kind of agree with Phil uh, Roth. I, I believe his name is Phil Roth, the drummer of the band, one of the most simplistic as drummers ever. But he's doing, he's drumming for AC DC. What do you expect? Um, I mean, he, he doesn't want to be on the Axel DC tour, you know, these days because he's like, uh, I'm not an Axel Rose guy and I would pretty much be the same. I would, I, I would be a bit more vulgar and saying, you know, fuck Axel Rose, fuck his overrated ass band, although I'm in one of the most overrated bands too, you know, ACDC, but Guns is way more overrated, I would say, you know, even more overrated, you know. It is, you know, ACDC at least has a handful of good albums, whereas Guns only has one, so you know, fuck that band. The death of lead singer Bon Scott, the band. Which you already know my opinion on the band, so there you go. Breaking up before regrouping around a new singer, Brian Johnson. I'm. Like, I've watched this video already, but I'm pretty sure I reacted to it already too, so. I don't, I don't want to repeat myself, but it was requested by Stephen Young, and he, you know, he always picks like the, the the list that I haven't done before. So I think I've done this one before, but I'm pretty pretty sure I have, or I have a feeling that I've done done it already. But I have that feeling because I've seen the video already, so off screen. I mean, this is just another, you know. ACDC song with rock and roll in the title. It's like all the other songs, but this one, you know, noise pollution, it just sounds funnier, you know, it sounds intelligent on an ACDC song. It's kind of ironic, I guess. I mean, it's it's just a great song, I love it. Really? Um, I actually thought that's Back in Black or You Shoot Me On at Long Word, you know, the highest rated tracks or the biggest singles of the album because I, I think that Rock and Roll and Noise Pollution is probably my favorite or Hell's Bells, you know, the, the bookends of Back in Black are pretty much the peak of ACDC right there. I didn't know that this song was the most popular one, but there you go. It's arguably the best one out of their career too, so can't argue with that. If only they had more records like this, man. I would have loved the shit out of ACDC, but you know, it's ACDC, yeah. So close, yet so far away. Um, a band that I do love, though. Nine, the Doors. Riders on the Storm, The Doors. Pretty much an amazing debut album, great follow-up, although it was kind of uninspired, but still great. And their last album is pretty good too. Morrison Hotel is a classic, so the majority of the The Doors career is really good. Really great, and there's like one like bald fuck online uh, old guy. Uh, I'm not sure what his name is again. I believe Keith or something. Like I sometimes comment on his videos like, oh good job, and I leave my own ranking and shit. Um, and he really loves the soft parade. I'm not sure what's up, what's up with that, but shout out to that guy. I believe I have more subs than him, but I'm not sure. No, I'm pretty sure he has more subs, but I don't know. Because he actually gets comments on his videos, so there you go. Piano or the spooky whispered vocals. This title is a story unto itself, as it's reportedly based on the late Jim Morrison's life. 
Very appropriate though. In fact, the title of the LA Woman song was so strong, it became the band's name when guitarist Robbie Krieger and keyboardist Ray Manzarek were denied usage of the Doors' name following Morrison's death. I mean those post Jim Morrison releases. I, I, I like uh, the American Sung Un Hero or something. I'm, I don't like that's not even close, I'm pretty sure, but something like that. Something with American Hero. That was kind of like a, a spoken word album than you know anything else. So it's kind of like a posthumous release of Jim Morrison, but it, it's still the best thing that they did after Jim Morrison. So there you go. Just kind of like a memorial for the singer, and I would have just ended there if, if I were them, but you know, too shitty. Two shitty, you know, post Jim Morrison albums later, and they call it quits because those albums are dog shit. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, uh, old woman behind the small country desk or something. I don't know how it's called again, but I love the shit out of this song. Number eight, elderly woman behind the counter in a small town, Pearl Jam. There you go. <laughs> Like Pearl Jam was getting tired of like the the one word titles, you know, uh, alive, black, uh, once, porch, oceans, you know, the the whole ten album basically, ten, you know, album, and, and you know versus to it. That's also one thing, but you, but that is an album that is, that's different, I guess. But Pearl Jam was getting tired of that. I, I believe you know I was just eating eating it up because I love the shit out of Pearl Jam but but the band was getting tired of it so they changed it up I suppose I don't really care anyway you know I just care if the music is good that's what I care about so there you go according to frontman Eddie Vedder this song being its lengthy title due to him growing bored with the band's usual one word titles I don't really mind honestly Descriptive and visual, the title sets the tone and nature of the story before it ever even begins, and can almost be considered a casting call. Better <laughs> claims he never physically wrote the lyrics. Eddie Vedder looks so good, man, back in the day. I believe that's a later era, like 2000s Eddie Vedder. But in the 90s, man. I actually think I look really similar to Eddie Vedder if I lost some weight, you know, and you know, 91 with my pork upon three shirt. I think I look really similar to uh, Eddie Vedder, personally. I don't really sound like him, but I look like him, I think. I really love the folk rock era of Pearl Jam, you know, Versus and, uh, and Vitology especially, I love those albums. Ten is of course, you know, the obvious highlight of Pearl Jam's career because that's where all the hits at. It's basically a greatest hits album, that's really what it is, that's why I love it. Um, no Code is kind of a low-key favorite of mine and Yield is really underrated, I think. I'm not really into the later era Pearl Jam, but I still really like them and I still like those later era releases that I said. The two, yeah, the, the two reason ones I really like. To a uh, reason one backspacer decade ago, <laughs> reason enough, I suppose. Hell yeah, uh, Champagne Supernova by Oasis. Love the shit out of this song. Um, top 10 Oasis songs. This is my number one writer, spoiler. Number seven, Champagne Supernova, Oasis. This Oasis were on the peak of their powers here. I mean. As you guys may know, I love beer now. It's I think it's a really underrated record, and do you know what I mean? And um, it's getting better, man. Are two of my favorite songs by Oasis, but nothing beats Champion Supernova for me. I think Standing is really underrated. Healing Chemistry was kind of a misstep, honestly, but you know, there's still some really good songs on there. Don't believe it's true. It was a great comeback record, and Dick Out Your Soul is a great close to the, to the Oasis career, so. But I mean, you can't deny the first three albums that Oasis had, and the master plan compilation. Like, I love the shit out of those albums. Uh, it may not make sense. 90s Oasis is flawless, 2000s Oasis is a bit flawed, but I still really love, love the band, yeah, so. It does. My opinion hasn't changed since the Beer Now review, so. 
The there title perfectly matches not only the swirling and psychedelic music of this Oasis song, but also its poetic and artful lyrics. It's just so verbal, man. The title is also in tune with the spinning out of body feeling of drunkenness or the dizzy heavy headedness of a hangover. <laughs> One of the best album closers, period. I fucking love this song. Songwriter Noel Gallagher also gained extra mileage from the title, naming both his home and his signature Epiphone guitar model after the song. Yeah. Spellbinding, honestly. Peace Cells. Number six, Peace Cells, Megadeth. I kind of prefer the, I, I know that Peace Cells is a great uh, title on its own, but I kind of agree with Alex here that I prefer the album title, Peace Cells was who's buying. I love the shit out of that album title. I think Peace Cells is still a really stellar uh, title track. But it should have had the but who's buying attachment to it because that's how the album is called. I, I think that would have been more appropriate, but you know, sure. Driven to write metal songs that were more socially and politically aware, Dave Mustaine lifted this song's title from a reader's. Oh writing. yeah, Dave Mustaine loves his politics, though. Article Doesn't he? Fuck sake. Cold War politics. <laughs> Megadeth is better than Metallica, obviously. Is, is Metallica on this list, though? Do they, do they have a really cool title? I don't, I don't think so. Are they on there? What, what would be on there? Enter Sandman or something, I don't know. She can destroy. Nah. Nah, I don't know on there. Master of Puppets? Nah. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Bullet with Butterfly Wings. Bullet with Butterfly Wings. The Smashing Pumpkins. Such a great title. I mean, the whole Melancholy era album. I believe it's a two disker, it's two hours of music and it's all stellar music, honestly. It's to a bag full of awesome riffs and Billy Corgan's overwrought It Sucks To Be Famous lyrics, but it's a title that pulls... <laughs> he does love the fame, though. Uh, no, I two of the biggest douchebags uh, considered in rock. Um, Noel Gallagher and Billy Corgan are actually touring with each other now. That's a really unique lineup, I think. Uh, fucking Billy Corgan and Noel G Gallagher. Both? Two of my idols, but they're both, you know, douchebags, of course, but it's a both in great bands, I think. But Billy Corgan is still touring under the Smashing Pumpkins name, whereas Noel Gallagher, you know, is so obviously not. And I mean, if you look at Billy Corgan's uh, view counts on YouTube with his solo career, no one gives a shit. I don't give a shit. I'm a huge Pumpkins fan, but I don't give a shit about Billy Corgan's solo career. Where I think, as no Gallagher has a pretty stellar solo career, so I do really like that, but I don't really care about Billy Corgan's solo project. But either way, I'm glad that they're touring together because <laughs> it's just such a perfect duo, I think. If, if they would get a friendship out of that, I, I would love to see the interviews out of that. Tell the listener that this will not be your average alt rock song. Because Noel has more of a, you know, British rock kind of vibe, and Billy has more of a kind of um, British American heavy metal kind of style to me. Merciful Fate, Metallica, Black Sabbath. That's what he really likes. No, really like more classic rock, so that would be really interesting to see them talk to each other, but it's probably not gonna happen. Oh, hell yeah. Um, constantly numb my Pink Floyd. Like, 
I don't really listen a lot to Pink Floyd uh, recently, but I want to pick it up again because Pink Floyd is a time sex. I mean, come on now. Number four, comfortably numb. Oh my four. god. There is no way you won't see. The song may what, what does receding mean? I've never heard of the word before, but I just sung it so I don't Who cares? <laughs> Like receiving, I do get that, but receding or <laughs> receding hairline. <laughs> it's not even, it's not even uh, related to fucking Pink Floyd. But there you go. Have comfortably numb. Did this ride is on the storm call already? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It was like on number ten. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Uh, yeah, Richard Wright, yeah. I believe they said Richard Wright. I, I can't really go back because I don't really have a lot of time anymore, but there you go. While a perfect match to the subject and feel of the song, the Waters Gilmore co-write was originally titled The Doctor. And the uh, concept's character, Pink. Owing to its role and placement in the storyline of its parent album, The Wall. What the fuck are they doing with, with that person? Whatever. Uh, number three, Grace Room, of course. Eh. Number three. Like, smells like tea. It's an iconic song, but number three, like above Champagne Supernova, P cells, Butter with Butterfly Wings, Comfortably Fucking Numb, no. Like, com uh, com comfortably Numb is such a chill title, and this is like, yeah. That bitch corner love sprayed some, you know, text on your wall, and now it's the title, like. It's creative, I suppose, but at the same time, it's a Courtney Love title, a Courtney Love inspired title. You can only go that far, you know. Uh, like, I do have a Nirvana playlist when I was a huge fan of them, I still kind of like the band, but I mean, Together, not number those three. Words were strong enough to launch a career, create an icon, and revolutionize modern music. Probably my favorite Nirvana song right now is not even a Nirvana song, Where Did You Sleep Last Night or uh, The Man Who Sold The World, David Bowie cover. Because they covered David Bowie, that's really the only reason that's like my favorite song by them. Like anything of that MTV Unplugged era is pretty good, Lake of Fire, although kind of cringy vocal on that one, but... Kurt Cobain had the idea for the title when a friend wrote Kurt Smells Like Teen Spirit on his wall. Yeah, so he didn't even come up with the title. He just, like, he copied it and, you know, he made a song out of it. Okay. I mean, everyone has heard this song. Who fucking cares, mate? Oh, fuck off. Not the fact that he smelled like his girlfriend's deodorant of the same name. Just move on to the next song. This is so over, you know, Contest overblown. Is Not that it mattered too much, considering the alt rock legacy. No one cares. Has left. Like to all those people that worship Kurt, oh, he's like hot and he is like a god and uh, he's so amazing. Explain to me why he's such a great guy. I, you know, even when I was a Nirvana fan, I was like Kurt Cobain. He's a pretty cool dude. He's pretty like. A down to earth guy, but you fucking retard like ruined his career and he killed himself, you know. Well, his legacy lived on, but still, you know, made him one of the most overrated, overhyped persons ever. Like, even Kurt thinks he's just a regular bloke and everyone hypes him up as the greatest god uh, in humanity, you know, in recent memory or of all time, really. And I mean, Kurt is just a regular ass bloke. The big four of, I want to say punk, because Nirvana is really a punk band under the grunge label. Like they're pretty much a, Mel, a poor man's Melvins or a poor man's Pixies. I actually really like, I'm getting into the Pixies right now. I kind of like the Pixies, but I pretty much like every band more than Nirvana at this point. So there you go. I would listen way, I would rather, uh, you know, listen way more to the Pixies or uh, Melvins, you know, because that's the two bands that they ripped off. And those bands are way better though, so, yeah. I mean, even Kurt would say that, so, there you go. I am the Wallace, the Beatles. 
Back to Greg Music. I mean, Nirvana isn't a bad band, but I mean, there's so many better bands than Nirvana. I mean, come on. For example, the Beatles. Now here's another clue for you all. The Walrus. I love, I love the uh, I love the Oasis cover too. I'm the Walrus on the Mass Plan uh, album. But of course, everyone you know loves Oasis compared to Beatles. But I mean, it's still a really good song. I mean, no one is gonna beat the Beatles, obviously. Here's another but. clue for you all. The Walrus was Paul, written to both confuse and mock people who read too. I mean, I love this song because it's just a complete middle finger to middle finger to people to diehard uh, Beatles fans like fucking Canadians. To non per se, him, you know, he's he likes the Beatles or he fucking loves the Beatles more than anything, really. I love the Beatles and I think this song is just brilliant because they're just you know flipping off their audience or the you know their hardcore fan base that is like oh the Beatles you know they they suck off the Beatles 24-7 and this was just a song for them to just fuck with them. I, I love the mentality. I mean the lyrics, the music clip and it's just such a fuck all song, I love it. This might be one of my top 10 favorite Beatles songs because it's just such a fuck all to Beatles fans. John Lennon modeled the melody after it's kind of like, um, how's this album called again? Uh, this really shitty Bob Dylan album. Uh, something with portraits, you know, Bob Dylan portraits, I don't know, it's called Self Portrait, I believe. It's kind of like that, but actually good. It is kind of a fuck all, we don't give a shit kind of song. But it's the Beatles, they can't fuck it up. Like they didn't even try here and it's still a masterpiece. That's that's the fucking Beatles for you. I am. <laughs> How they're like standing there. Oh, I'm the walrus. <laughs> I love this clip right here. Eggman. I am the Eggman. I am. <laughs> I got George Harrison's facial expression is like, we don't give a fuck. Fuck you. Fuck the hardcore fans. I love that clip right there. If, if, if that is on uh, fucking. If that is on YouTube, I would love to see that. I'm pretty sure it's on the uh, official Beatles channel. I won't say always, but. You know what they do to guys like us in prison? Yeah, they rape you because you're emo facts. I'm gonna get hate for that, but like literally every like favorite bands on like YouTube, they're fucking awful, except for uh, Mike the Music Snobs and Cover Killer Nation. Those are good lists, but outside of that, they're all fucking trash. The ARTV one, the ARTV one is mixed because there are some good bands on there, but there's also some emo shit on there. Every fucking pick is like emo shit. Like fuck off, mate. Garbage. Rock Lobster, the B-52s. I mean, the title is kind of funny, but the band name is abysmal. Like some numbers, who cares? That frontman too, like fuck all attitude. Is it progression if a cannibal uses a fork? That's a good title, but it's more emo shit by Chayo Dolls. Like pop punk emo shit, like fuck off with that shit. The only emo thing that I like is Weezer's Pinkerton, Pinkerton, if you can really call it emo, or you know, even the Blue Album or the whole career for that matter. And I like Green Day, so that's really the only two things that I like about that in the slider. So there you go. Don't eat that yellow snow by Frank Zappa. But, but the thing is, Weezer at heart is an alternative rock band, you know, we, uh, Weezer, Rivers Cuomo said it himself. Every time I eat vegetables, it makes me think of you. Of course, Ramones has a retarded title like that, I mean, come on. Now. I can't pause that anymore, so let's just move on. Oh yeah, the number one pick is a Fall Out Boy pick. I mean, it is a funny title, but Fallout Boy is fucking abysmal. Like Infinity on Hannah, 
Uh, favorite band ever. You're fucking retarded. Made us change the name of the song so we wouldn't get sued. I mean, all these hipster boys have like they have one like one or two like classic picks from there, like Pink Floyd or the Beatles. Oh, look at us! We're so hipster. We're so uh, we're so old school. We like good music. It's so inconsistent. Abysmal song. I mean, why do people like Fallout Boy? Really? Like, fuck's sake. Oh, fuck off. Don't mention the temptations when you're talking about Fallout Boy. That's an insult to my ears. And all this. Instead, led to his dismissal. While we have no comment on whether lawsuits would have been drawn, the late singer's estate did sue NBC and what the fuck? for the depiction of his death. I mean, you're rocking out to a pop track. Fuck off. So maybe the boys were smart to heed their lawyer's advice. With vocal tone. Fuck off, mate. Nah. Your song title? Whiny ass vocalist. Cause someone cares. That's a fun song, but the song is shit. Diner. Country sucks. This is a funny title, though. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. I only have half a minute, so I'm not gonna read any comments or maybe one, you know. Um, what's the comment though? I clicked for Megadeth, there you go, it came for Megadeth. Some, who else clicked for Megadeth? Like for that, like, like. Uh, yeah, but people, you know, Infinity on Hannah, ARTV, your fucking emo faction, come on now. Like, not an insult to them, but your music taste is atrocious. Like, all these favorite bands is. Like, I'm probably gonna make a video about it someday, because all those lists are trash. I'll, I'll see you in the next one, I don't live in town, what a